My name is Roland Junk. You actually know me. Um, I am here with People in Canada. We have a few new things. This platform 2022 is coming up. There is the ePlan certification. We're talking about a systems integrator program that is put in place here in Canada to evaluate uh, the customers. A couple of interesting things to come and see. The eManage, quite an interesting way to manage and collaborate on projects with other customers. There is the Retail and ePlan sustainable panel building and switchgear manufacturing. And here we focus on the manufacturing side, really interesting topics. Now today it's gonna to be simple. I'm going to work on ePlan. I'm going to do a modification of a project. So this project here to do the modification or to actually do a revision, I will simply copy it very quickly like this using the same name, but a 02 version type of thing. I could have used the revision management and create my, my version through there, um, keeping the same name. But in this particular case, I want to have access to both projects separately because the discussion here is whether we have two contactor coils for two motors and it, their overloads, or if everything is driven through one single contactor. So I don't want to necessarily argue about this, but the idea here is that on some of these pages, and specifically on the motor side here, we have right now two different contactors, and in this case, we only want one. So the first thing comes first. I'm just going to use this cross-reference here to jump to the two coils, and I will basically delete these two coils, Q2, Q3 here, so we don't need the coils anymore. And back in the schematic, or on the schematic side, we will basically connect here directly the uh, wires from the first to the second. So this is going to be done this here is going to be moved up, so we are picking up from here. These are no longer there. I'll just get rid of those. I'll get rid of those ones. These are regular wires, so as you can see, this is all good. So good. Works out for perfect. We know that here we can get rid of these here, and this is how it works. So technically, in this case, we are driving with one set of coils in contactors, so Q2, Q3, feeds as well the overload 1 and 3 here on this side. So uh, maybe this one here, do we have an overload 2? I'm just going to check very quickly because I'm a little bit surprised it's called 3, but hey, I'll just leave it as it is. And there we go. Now that I did this change, uh, I can maybe just close here the... Uh, 90 degree angle because we only have a direct feed on the first contactor. And I'm going to focus now on the aspect here. So maybe we can close this project so we don't have unnecessary projects there. And I will open the panel itself. So not only open the panel, but I'm going to drill it down to the back plate because the biggest change that we have now is right here in this case uh let's zoom in so let's here take the zoom not 100 percent but let's take the zoom window right there so what we are changing is in this area here so maybe the front view is the very best one so we said earlier that the uh q2b actually goes away these ones will be positioned differently um let's just delete that. So we just delete it. That's fine. Then the other thing that we wanted to delete, I believe it's here, the Q3B. That's perfect. And the question is, of course, if you want to keep, if everything goes in line from left to right, maybe why don't we just take these ones off for two seconds? Because remember, when you delete something, we're in a digital twin circumstance. So technically, when you look at these components and you look at these uh, relays that we just removed, they are not entirely removed. They are just basically popping up here as unplaced components, and you can just go and place them, right? So we have the Q2, uh, we have the Q3. Q4 seems to be not placed, but I'm not going to handle that one, so I don't know why it's actually omitted. So I'm going to take these two and just drag and drop them over and place them.
Now, what we will do is just figure out, okay, what is the placement here? So maybe a little bit more like this, perfect. Let's adjust just slightly the, um, the docs that we have down here. So I'm gonna remove that doc D4, which is quite nasty because it's very short. And I will extend this D3, just extend it there. Makes more sense, right? So you can see that if you rerun, let's say, the, uh, the routing path, this will readjust automatically and will connect here. So now the overloads we had earlier, one and three, they actually do come with an object, which is, let's see here, it's actually related to this uh, special part. Let me just open it and I'll show you. Uh, this part here, this is actually the uh, interesting thing that I, I want to show you. It's actually a mounting kit like this, right? And based on that mounting kit that, that I have, is basically what um, will basically be uh, the, the base. And I'm going to place on that base, I'm going to place it. So typically when I get here, I should get that drawing, which is that base. So that base is in line the OL2 with the Q2 at the top, more or less, right? I could have placed the other base also at the same time. So you can see always there's a small checkbox we can put it next to each other. We can also space it out a little bit. We see that we have enough room here to actually do so. Now, what's going to happen on those ones is that these overloads, rather than being stuck in on this side, they are primarily stuck in to this base, not in a very special or, or, or special way. So there are different ways to look at this. But one easy way to place it is just by dragging and dropping. And when I do drop it here, I can basically pinpoint on that attachment point. So that has been all like organized and coordinated so that when you look at it from a 3D perspective, it just makes it quite easy to actually place it. You just here nail in on that insertion point and bingo, there we go. So when you look at it from the top side, that's all nice. When you look at it from the side here, you can see that they actually snap in there, right in the right position. And we can perfectly see there is enough room. I mean, if we want to move things, we could even probably move these a little bit up because we have now, even if you have the routing, you can actually check the routing and see they actually hook up very nicely to, to each other. So it's, it's really a cool thing, I would say, uh, to do. You can also take this one here and see if that one actually hooks up and you will see that it actually jumpers like this. So you have jumpers between these two because you're feeding them off of, you know, the same Q2 and Q3. Yeah, space is there. It works. Um, what else? Uh, remember in ePlan, we actually generate the different manufacturing drawings automatically. So typically like the man mounting panel here for the CC1, this one is most likely and will be adapted. As you can see, model view is not up to date. So all I have to do now actually to update it. So I will have here these reorganized. As you can see, OL1, OL2, perfectly in place. Uh, on the right hand side here, you can see the part numbers, everything that's related to it. Uh, what else did I change? ODNC oh, drilling. So a little bit like your shadow, right? When you run, the shadow follows you. Well, here, when I do actually move a component like in this case, I'm looking at the back plate, which is the last one, Murphy's Law, right? You can see here, it says and will tell you that this is not up to date. So when I open it here, you can see we still have this situation of that D4 that is there. I'm just gonna update it. And like a shadow, boom, my drilling pattern is updated. I can also see here that my two DIN rails are slightly like offset like this. So that's why they have two different ones. It's all a perfect shadow of your 3D. Really cool. If you don't know about ePlan or Pro Panel, well, um, here we have a few tutorials you can look up for. Uh, you can come and watch it on our websites. If you go back here to our websites, uh, I like this website here where the Rital and ePlan are presented because this really clearly shows us how engineering and everything else is and can be done. 
And if you want to discover a little bit more, you can go into these discovery modes. Uh, they have very, very interesting uh, data and information that you can go through. Really nice, nice thing to watch or to look for. So that was ePlan Canada, Roland Jung. If you like what you see, subscribe to my channel. I do some regular videos here once in a while.